Hello everyone and welcome to another StarCraft 2 video. For this one we're doing another Protoss tutorial. This is my PvZ build. Very unique. Different than probably anything you've seen. With some really cool aspects to it. And this is kind of the build that, that brought me into Protoss because when Ravens were nerfed I tried going BC Raven and then I realized that the alt optimal number of ravens in BC Raven is like zero. So I ended up getting like two or three ravens just for memes and going mass BC. And then I realized BCs have a lot of hard counters and those hard counters either don't exist for carriers or Protoss has a way to counter the counter. So I'm like, BC is just like a really bad carrier. So that's what got me trying out Protoss. And this is the build that's stuck. So this is going to be my long macro build that involves a lot of carriers. And right away, we're going to start off with something quite unique. And then I'm going to be going Nexus first, but in a way that no one does. And I feel like this is knowledge that I have that just no one else has. Because you notice, I'm not building a pylon. I'm going to go Nexus before Pylon, which seems crazy bad, but in testing it, it's actually better in basically every single way. Um, yeah, I guess I can stop and just touch on that now. So what happens is you notice I'm at 15 to 15 supply, and I'm going to say supply cap for a long period of time. It's like, oh my god, you're not making workers at the beginning of the game. That's so key to your economy, and you're always going to be behind in workers. And actually, none of that's true because we get our nexus down quicker which not only lets us we get our nexus down quicker right and we're at 15 supply before that pylon finishes which means we're almost fully saturated on these minerals if you go pylon the nexus you have a whole bunch of extra workers that there's nothing to do with unless you take your gas before your gateways as well which is kind of crazy so with all these extra workers, either oversaturating this base or distance mining them over here. So you're not actually getting that much more income than doing it this way. And as for falling behind in workers, well, this Nexus finishes sooner, which means we start building from two Nexuses sooner. We have an extra Chrono Boost sooner, and you actually end up ahead in workers as compared to the Pylon first build. So it's pretty cool. And then on top of that, it allows you to do something quite different in PvZ in that you can Nexus first and Cannon Rush, which is usually not possible. So let's get into the build now. So you build the Nexus at 400 and immediately send out that probe, and then bring another probe at the same time and build a pylon at 100. And the reason you don't build this pylon with this probe is just because it's really tight on timing to get the Cannon Rush down. Uh, for the first pylon, if you want to know how to always place it perfectly, place it so when you see the ring, the ring doesn't touch here and the ring doesn't touch here. And this is true for every map. Just keep it like just slightly away from touching the edges and that'll allow you to place structures um, right up against the edge. And it's nice to have the pylon far back as you'll see later, as far back as possible. Because you, you could also put the pylon here and do the same thing, but it won't be as good. Yep. So anyways, uh, you're building the pylon, and as soon as the pylon finishes, we're going to throw down a forge. This probe is traveling across the map, and you can see I'm kind of doing a path thing where I'll avoid the initial overlords. And since the second overlord typically goes up this way, I don't even go in this way. I come in this way. So forge goes down. Back to mining, coming in. And we're going to throw down a pylon right away. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like it will get scouted. But we got some minerals to play with. If he doesn't come right away, we can still maybe get this going. Uh, the next structure you're going to do is double cannon. And had he not pulled, that's all I would do. But in this case, you can actually throw down more structures. You can throw down as many structures as you want to to get these cannons up. Uh, in this case, just one pylon was enough. But you can throw down like a gateway and two pylons because you can always cancel them before they complete. 
Um, next, I want to send out this probe to kind of look around for alternate expansions that you might be taking. And then you want to start building your wall off. So it's going to be barracks. Uh, if he didn't go hatchery first, then there's a whole variant to this, which I can show you in the next replay. So you can see this probe is kind of just walking around, going from this point to this point to this point. And you can often kind of rush the second base too, which is almost GG at that point. Um, yeah, so gateway and cannon, and then a second gateway to temporarily wall off. And then we're going to start taking gas geysers. Uh, once this first gateway completes, though, we're going to cancel the second gateway and build a cyber core. This is just to prevent a ling run by. This gateway completes, cyber core, and we leave a gap, which we will fill with a probe. And this is why it's nice to have the pylon back as far as possible. If a bunch of lings come flooding in, I can throw down a uh, pylon here to wall off. And even if he goes for like a bailing bus, there's even enough room to throw down a forge. So if he tries a bailing bus, I can quickly throw down a forge. Which can soak up a lot of bailings, maybe even completely stuff the uh, bailing bust. Uh, we're building a single cannon in the base. I like to have it near the mineral line. This is in case of ling drop. Just a pretty cheap defense and very effective. And I like to do this every time if I take down an ex uh, take down a hatchery. Because I feel like I have a good lead at that point, and this is a good way to protect me from uh from blowing that lead by letting him do something aggressive. Um, but even if you don't take down the Nexus, it's not a bad idea. Early link drop is not uncommon. Uh, with the Cybercore finished, we threw down a Stargate right away to construct um, a Void Ray with to help take our third. And the Void Ray is about all you need to take a third because you can only have like Lings and Roaches and Ravagers, and none of those things can kill a Void. I mean, I, technically Ravagers can, but not if you're paying attention. I did go two alternate bases, and he got a gold, so he's not in the worst shape economically, but that was kind of dumb. I think he just lost that two cannon. Uh, once you're fully saturated on your first two bases, you're going to want to start rallying to your third, and we're going to throw down the Nexus here. Now, our Void Ray is not out, so he might cancel this, but not a big deal, right? It's worth going for it. If you don't get it up, you cancel it and delay it. And this is kind of the way you expand, right? You use, after your first two bases are saturated, you queue up everything to your third. And once your third base is saturated, you queue up everything to your fourth and throw down a nexus here. That's it's a very simple and effective way of doing it. We're going to go up to three Stargates. And I like to chrono out carriers for a little while. Now, in theory, if you want more carriers, you can always build more Stargates. But if you want faster upgrades, the only way to do that is through Chrono Boost. So in the past, I've just spent all my Chrono Boost on double upgrades and shield upgrades. But you're a little bit vulnerable at the beginning, especially against um, Hydro timings. So I feel like it's good to throw a few Chronos into the Stargates first to get a handful of carriers and then start just mass chronoing the uh, the double upgrades of the forge. So basically all our gas is going to be going into these carriers. And anything we have left over in terms of minerals is going to be going to static defense. Um, shield batteries, one is enough. Now the shield batteries cost 100. Cannon is just flat out better in terms of defense. But it's nice to have at least one. Um, just to keep your, uh, like a carrier alive or something like that. Uh, 
Uh, make sure you get the upgrade right away for the faster interceptor stuff. Otherwise, carriers will not be able to fight hydras at all. Though the interceptors will just die as they're exiting. Need that upgrade to spew out all the interceptors at once. Uh, with this base fully saturated, you can see I started queuing to the next one and throwing down a nexus there. We got the Twilight Council, so we can continue our shield upgrades at the Forge, and also to head towards Templar. Because Templar, basically everything that counters carriers can be solved by Templar. <laughs> um, if it's just pure Hydra, for instance, then just adding in Storms is great. Although carriers alone can handle Hydras as long as you're maxed. Um, but more importantly, Corruptors, which are very strong versus Carriers because of their bonus to Massive, uh, are surprisingly mincemeat to Archons. Um, I always thought Void Rays would be the counter to the Corruptors, but they're not at all. It's Archons. Archons do splash damage, bonus to Biological, and you just get them on the clumps of uh, Corruptors and they disappear like hitting them with Seeker Missiles. Again, this base is fully saturated, so we're moving on to the next. I kind of, in terms of stack defense, I need to. I think of like where I'm positioning my carriers. In this case, I'm going to position my carriers over here to help establish this one base. So I know that this one's like way out of the way for me. So I threw down an especially large amount of stack defense here. So you can see I have like three or four cannons over here and like ten over here. Again, continuing double upgrades, Forge. Um, when you throw down your Templar Archives, you also want to throw down a Robotics Facility. Because we're going to max out... Um, yeah, when we max out, we're going to kind of be hitting 3 3 3 at the same time. And that's when we want to move out. And when we move out, we need... Uh, we need observers. Clear out the creep and to deal with burled investors, which are, might definitely be trying to neural parasite our carriers, as that's supposedly a counter to carriers, and that's really not. <laughs> so it's taking slow and steady. I also like to go up to three or four gateways. I do not get warp gate, partially because I have these on double air upgrades, but also because then you gotta remember to do warp in cycles, right? If you just leave them with gateways, you can just queue up a bunch of Templar. <laughs> it's a nice uh, dummy-proof way to build units if you're really bad at macro. Like me. And we're just starting to build up that Archon count now. Yeah, you can even skip Psystorm if you want to. It's like, the Archons are much better against almost everything than Templar are, in this case. He's gonna pee on a structure. I've had games where he's killed, like, every single Nexus by peeing on it, and it's not a big deal, because you can just rebuild it. He probably loses more killing the Nexus in terms of value than you gain, than you lose in losing the 400 Minerals. And it's not like you can push that tempo into victory because you still have your whole army. You you just retake it and start mining again. So don't worry too much about that. We're gonna engage over here. Start clearing out creep. I like to, my plan is to always go after his newest expansions. Cut him off economy. You can also try to go for the throat and take out his like hive or whatever. I don't know. In terms of control, you just kind of want to A-move and then take control of the Archons and just move the Archons between the Corruptors and the Carriers. Um, hold position is really nice. Just kind of move it under the Corruptors and kind of hit hold position. That way they won't end up running to try to kill a Hydra or a Zergling. 
Uh, appears he does have Neural Parasite. So again, controlling the Archons, putting them under the Corruptors. Against Neural Parasite, I get... You can try to feedback them first and stuff like that. It's not so effective. If you storm them, they can survive a storm. So I think the best way to do it, I didn't do it well in this engagement, is just let them neural parasite you and then take your units and focus fire down all the ones that are neural parasiting you. Because typically the Zerg player will not do anything with these carriers he's neural parasited. They'll just say, like their carriers will shoot at interceptors of your carriers. Like it's not a big deal. So I didn't do it well this game. You can see they stay. I went for storms, which is dumb. It took me a long time to start focus firing these down. I finally did it. And this is why observers are important. So we got three two three upgrades, almost three three three. And that is GG. So that is the build. Very strong, very simple. A little bit boring, I gotta say. It's like the same late game value play like as I have with Ravens, but Ravens have a lot more micro and decision making and how do I spend my energy and where do I position them and where do I attack? Or, you know, break out the memes, but this Protoss army is more or less about A moving. Build up and then A move. Uh, we'll show one more replay. This is a replay where a lot of things go poorly, so I figured that would be a good one to show. Um, sorry, this is on a previous patch, so it's a little... Where are you? It was on Neil Violet. I think this is it. Loading, loading, loading. Okay, so. Once again, building the Nexus first, and then the Pylon, and sending out this probe. Again, trying to avoid the initial overlords, and coming back behind his base. And here's the variant, right? So if his hatchery has just started, or non-existent, then he went pool first. So you gotta worry about early Zerglings, but you're actually fine with that. This means you throw down the uh, gateway, in this case I need another structure and a pylon. Yeah, so gateway, cannon, often the second gateway is enough to solid wall off. Um, in this case I had to throw down a pylon and then a gateway. And you're fine against uh, the zergling rush. So the zerglings will be arriving now, you got a solid wall and a cannon. Easy peasy. Now I said things went wrong this game because he wasn't actually going for that sort of attack. He took the gold base. So I'm doing a super defensive opening. Meanwhile, he's doing a greedy opening. Not a good combination. So canceling the second gateway to throw down a cyber core. 
Uh, on this particular map, normally you leave like a one gap and put a, a worker in there. In this case, I just completely solid wall off because when I need to expand next, I can always take down this structure. Plus, I'm the next expansion will only be my fourth because I have a pocket expansion up top. Getting that pylon down my base, taking my gas geysers. Still thinking I could be facing something aggressive, so getting that photon cannon down. I guess he scouted that. It's kind of weird how he beeline straight for that probe. As soon as the cyber core is done, we're starting to stargates because the void ray is important. Not so much on this map because you have this over here, but the void ray is important at holding off attacks. So he will be dropping in. And the cannon helps a lot. Because otherwise we're just fighting these off with workers. Fortunately he's uh, being really clever about his positioning, attacking what he can outside of range. It's a little annoying. But we do have that bordery on the way. Checking for the third. Come over here trying to kick this off some workers. Got one or two successfully. Four workers in total. I guess we lost one over here, so I got three on the drop. Pretty good. This actually isn't the replay I wanted to show. I don't think. Anyways, um, yeah, going up to those. Okay, so in this particular game, I think I'm trying faster. Yeah, faster Templars. So again, like I said, early Hydra timings can be quite strong when you just have a handful of carriers. So I said you can chrono boost, chrono boost out carriers quicker. In this case, I'm trying to get Psystorm quicker. Um, I need the Templar archives later anyways. But maybe instead of having five carriers, I have two or three carriers and they can a few storms. And with cannons, storms and cannons are pretty good combined. So again, taking this fourth base once the other bases are saturated. The first cannon, you typically put it here, that way the cannon can actually shoot at these rocks. Circling against the grinders of uh, carriers. Carriers have very high DPS, extremely high, especially versus ground. And yeah, building Templar one at a time. It's a lower carrier count, but Storm. Kind of cool. Placing the... Yeah, you gotta be careful to fall back. Don't push in until you lose all your interceptors. There's like a point where fighting becomes detrimental. The last thing you want to is have like a whole bunch of flying paperweights here at the carrier. So when things are going well, keep fighting. Once the interceptor count starts dropping, pull back. Pulling probes is never something you want to do, but sometimes it looks like it's necessary. It buys you very little help, but if that help allows you, you to turn the tide of the fight, then it's probably worth it. Um, 
This is a little dangerous leaving this opening here, but to take the space, if you don't blow it away, they have to probes have to walk all the way around this way to get here. does have corruptors. Kind of the issue, another issue with Storm is no matter how well you hit the enemy with Storm, you're also hitting all your own interceptors at the same time. And your interceptors die a lot quicker than his units do. So Storm can actually, well it's always a net benefits, sometimes it's barely helpful because you destroy so many of your own interceptors that kind of uh, negates the help it gives. Looks like he did a Muta switch. Just kind of cool. Picked off Carrier, though I'm not sure if that was worth it. And it was being really annoying to my army. Just Zergling Sphere, not an issue. If you do leave this door closed, put your additional gateways on the outside here. That way you can you can rally the Templar better. You can see we're getting to our ultimate composition here. We got the 333 upgrades done, we got the Archons, and I think we're just waiting on uh, the Observers. Yeah, there's the facility. So we do have the Observers, now we're moving out. Flood, but we're well defended. Here's I'm not pushing across the map yet. I just cleared out some creeps to take my next base. I don't really recall this game was from so long ago. Not sure what my mindset was, why I didn't think I could go across the map. Maybe because I wasn't max quite yet, but. Um, I got everything I need. Got the carriers, the archons, the observers. Yeah, that's everything. He's actually one of the few Zerg players who knows how to use Parasitic Bomb now. You don't actually spam it because they no longer overlap, so you use them in intervals. Throw down a couple, pull back, throw down a couple more, pull back, throw down a couple more, pull back. Now these are carriers, so <laughs> Parasitic Bomb only does so much. Bomb is actually pretty strong on the interceptors, I gotta say. Infested Terrans, extremely good versus battle cruisers, right? Sorry, I just want to pause. If this is one of the things that made me switch to Protoss back then, because if you attack a base and throw down a whole bunch of intercept or a whole bunch of invested Terrans, your option is Terran is to pull back and let those invested Terrans kill the base, or fight with your battle cruisers. And invested Terrans got a huge buff in anti-air. They shoot these like different projectiles now, and they will just shred your battle cruisers. But with carriers, you can fight the interceptors. You can fight the infested Terrans, I mean, and have your carriers like way in the back and be completely safe because it's your interceptors are the only things the infested Terrans can shoot. It's just hard to justify playing Terran when for battle battle cruisers when carriers are better in basically every single way. So killing army, clearing creep.
just super strong. Always keeping the Archons on the Corruptors. Yeah, I guess my idea was to continue up the map, killing the creeps and his new expansions, leaving him with basically no mining bases. So that is the build. It actually works on every map. I know I showed two on the same map by accident, but um, on different maps, same idea. You take your first two bases. Did I show two on the same map? No, I didn't. Never mind. Take it all back. But yeah, as each base saturates, as soon as it saturates, is you take the next one. Very simple. Cue all your, cue all your next side to the next one. Chrono boost out a couple Stargates or rush to Templar to help versus um, early Stalker or early uh, Hydra timing. So then after that, you just want to put all your Chrono into your triple upgrades, shields, air armor, air attack. Um, and then before you're ready to push out, get a couple observers. You don't even need a robo facility before then. All your gas is going into carriers and later Templar. Any leftover minerals you may happen to be floating goes into static defense. Now, the amount of extra minerals you have is varies from game to game. Because if you lose a base, if you're losing workers, you got to replenish those so you won't have as many minerals if you're fighting a lot don't forget about the cost of interceptors because if you're fighting a lot and you can continue losing interceptors that actually adds up to a large um mineral investment to keep rebuilding them but once you have this army of carriers three three and archons just go shred <laughs> it's so good uh, once you finish your third upgrade on um the forge too. Don't forget, you can switch into ground weapons. Give your archons uh, up their attack. And that's about it. The only um, major weakness this build has is Nidus Worm. You get this cannon here, and it helps a little bit versus drop tech but the ninus can be coming a little bit later and at that point you'll have one cannon you'll have probes and you'll have a void ray um now i like to kind of sneak the void ray behind and kill the ninus to keep reinforcements from coming that gives you the best chance of surviving it but if a bunch of queens pop out of that ninus you are in a lot of trouble a lot of trouble um you're not dead but you can't kill what comes out of the nidus and that's a problem what you kind of got to do is uh build a second stargate back here or something and if you can survive until the point where you get carriers out then you can usually push it back and that almost guarantees no matter what you're gonna lose your main base but depending how all in he is it, it can be okay as long as you don't die Um, if he doesn't bring queens to the Nidus, then you can, you know, slowly deal with things. But yeah, Nidus Worm. Major issue. Nidus Worm and then those mid-game timing attacks from Zerg that involve Hydras plus other units or just Hydras on their own, which you may do, scouting multiple Stargates. Because when you have, like, five carriers and he comes at you at like 160 supply worth of hydralisks. He just rips apart all the interceptors and then then you're kind of in trouble from that point. Um, in the end game, when I got this thing locked around, hydras are an absolute joke. Hydras are not anti-air units compared to corruptors. Corruptors, like an unupgraded corruptor will do way better dollar for dollar against carriers than uh, than a 3-3 Hydralisk. It's not an issue once you get higher, but that timing attack 
where they can have a large army supply and you just have a few carriers it can be difficult. Um, again, it's all about patience though. I know it might feel bad like if he's blasting through this base and killing everything, you just want to attack with your carriers and lose all your interceptors. But again, once he gets to the point where you're attacking the inter the Hydralis and you notice your interceptor count is getting low, you got to retreat. And that means losing this base. And it might be losing this base. And it might mean even losing this base. And then it might mean losing the game from that point forward. But it's the only option to win is to continually fall back. And um, yeah, sometimes you can recover. You know, you might kill all your bases, but if you do get up to that, buy enough time and get up to that carrier account where you can attack, and he's still stuck on Hydra tech, and you got an army that can smoke Hydras at that point because you have enough carriers, you can slowly rebuild back into the game. Anyways, this has been a long video. Where are we at? 36 minutes. Oh my god. Well, I guess considering I'm only doing one video on this build, it would need to be long, but it's a very strong build. Um, I played it enough that I've worked out most of the kinks. Um, you can find all my replays on SC2 replay stats if you want to look for other replays of this stuff. But um, yeah, this is more or less the gist of it. I think I covered it all. And um, very strong. A little bit boring, <laughs> but very strong. Uh, with that, thank you, everyone, and I'm out of here. Goodbye.